Welcome to the Exchange Training Photoshop tutorial on creating documents of specific sizes, specific dimensions, and documents created for specific purpose, like creating a document that's going to be printed certain dimensions, or a document that's going to be sent via email or placed somewhere online, and it needs to be a specific dimension and specific resolution. So we'll be here creating a new document, we'll be making sure it's the right dimensions, and we'll be adding this image here as an example. So say we've got this image in here, and we're going to place it on a new document. So you open the image you want to use, then you create a new document using File, New, or Control n on Windows, or Command n on a Mac, and get this new document dialog box. You can give your document name straight away. So for example, I'll be creating a document here that's going to be printed say A5 size. So I'm going to call it print underscore A5. For document type we'll use some presets. So in this case we'll be using international paper because we're going to print it. If you create something for the web you can use the web preset. I'm just using international paper. Now which preset you're using here depends on what size you're going to use it. For example if you print something A4 size use international paper. But if you want to print it letter size, the US size, which is slightly wider, slightly longer than A4, use a US paper. In this case, we use international paper for size. We'll use A5. Photoshop will make sure dimensions are right. You can always change the insert measurements, but we'll just leave it because Photoshop will make sure this is an A5 document, so that's okay. Because you create a document for print, Photoshop will also make sure the resolution is set to 300 ppi, 300 pixels per inch. Color mode. Now, if you're going to print it, now this depends. If you're going to print it at home, or, or let's say if you're going to print it on a home printer, RGB color, possibly, or if you have a CMYK printer, then CMYK color. If you're going to send it for print to a professional printer, commercial printer, then we'll be using CMYK color in here. Okay. For background contents, white. Or any color you want. For now, we'll just leave it white, and I'm going to show you how to change the color really easily. So let's leave it as white, that's okay. Unadvanced, we'll leave it for now, and we'll just click OK. And you've got a new document on your dimensions. If you want your document to be landscape mode instead of portrait mode, you can easily rotate it using image menu, image rotation, and you can rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise. So it's this the size. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in a bit, view, zoom in, or control plus, or command plus, to make it bigger. Now we'll switch back to the document in here, to the image, and we're going to add it into our document. So we'll use the move tool, click on the image, hold the mouse button down, drag it, keep holding the mouse button down all the time, drag it to the tab with the, your document, hold it there for about a second so the document appears, keep holding the mouse button down, Move the cursor down, and when your cursor is over the image, you won't have a preview, no. You just release the mouse button, and the image will appear. Okay? So that's the image. If you want to position it, you can now use these amazing new smart guides in Photoshop CC 2015. So we can easily position it in the center vertically, and it will snap to the center here as well. You may see the guides, but if you don't, it will snap to the center. So it's in the center. If you want to make it bigger, now you need to be really careful because if you're making the image bigger, the image will start losing the quality. So to start with, you make sure that the image is of high quality. Okay. But if it's just a matter of making it just a little bit bigger, that's okay. We can just use Edit, Transform, Scale. You can tick the chain icon in the Options bar to keep proportions, or you can hold the Shift key down instead. And you just use one of the corner handles to resize it, to make it bigger. Click on the tick in the options bar or press enter or return on the keyboard to accept it. We can still move it if you're not sure if it's in the center. Okay, we can always move it. So say we could move it up a little bit if it's supposed to look like a Polaroid or we just get it in the center. Now it's exactly in the center of the document. Okay, so now that we have a document, let's say we want to add some text here as well. Text tool in here, horizontal type tool. Check the options bar. So I'm definitely going to change the color because it's white. So I'll change it say dark green, I'll click OK. I'm not sure what the font family of font size, so for now I'm just going to click in the page in here and type some text. So say I'm going to type the text from this board here, Milton Keynes Art Center. 
and I'll just accept it by clicking on taking the options button here. And I'll make it smaller, it's too big, a little bit smaller. I'll keep the font in here. I'll move the move tool, just move it so it's exactly in the center in here. To make the image look a bit better, what we can also do is put a shadow behind it. So in the layers panel, you select the layer of the image. I would rename it here as well, so this would be image. And then you go to layer menu, down to layer style, and drop shadow. Alternatively, you could click on the FX icon at the bottom of the layers panel. This would do the same. So layer style, drop shadow. I move the window aside in here. It's quite big, so you're not going to see the entire window, but you can see the shadow around in here. So I'm just going to drop the distance a little bit, because it's a bit too far, and the size as well. Typically what you do is you increase the distance to position it far away from the object, like in here. If you want to soften the shadow, you increase the size. And by default the shadow should be on this side here, on the right and bottom. That's a bit too much. So I'm going to drop the distance a little bit, and the size as well. Let's click OK. You can always edit it. And that's our document. So now we're ready to export it. So in this case, keep in mind, we create a document that's going to be printed. And let's say we're going to send it for print to a printer. So when we save it, File, Save As, we're going to save it as a PDF document. Adobe calls it here a Photoshop PDF. Now, in here, okay, but it will create a standard PDF document. I'm just going to save it on a desktop. Okay, so I'll keep the file name, save as Photoshop PDF, perfect, we'll just save that. You get this message about the changes in settings, that's okay, we'll just click OK in here. Now, when you're printing, you typically want to have either the high quality print, or if you're going to print it at a commercial printer, let's say here in the UK or anywhere in Europe, a standard we use, and standard that your printer would ask you about, is the PDF X1A 2001. And that's what I'm going to use in here. Okay. And then we're just going to save it. So we'll click on Save PDF, and the document will be saved in your chosen location. It's a CMOK document, so this, this color space we use, and the document is ready to go. And that's how you can create documents of specific dimensions, specific sizes, resize images to make sure they're the right size, add some text, add some layer effects like a drop shadow, and export it to appropriate file format.